Welcome back. In the last video we talked about the role of the nervous system when it comes to detection and response. In this video we're going to cover something which is somewhat related. I'll read the actual dot point. It says, students will gather, process and analyze information from secondary sources and use available evidence to develop a model of a feedback mechanism. So in this dot point what you actually have to do is you have to model the feedback mechanism. So before we start, I want to go over an analogy and also talk about this feedback mechanism in that analogy itself. So what I have here is an aircon or how the aircon itself works. And I'll use that to describe what the feedback mechanism actually is. What the feedback mechanism is, is all about the response affecting the stimulus. So response affecting stimulus, that's your feedback mechanism. And I explain exactly what that means. So what we'll do is up here we've got stimulus detection control center response, labeled one, two, three, four. And here we have our air con. So how air cons work is you might have this, this is a thermostat. And what it does is it measures your the temperature of the surroundings. And here we've told our thermostat that we want to keep it at 25 degrees Celsius. So let's say we want to keep it at 25 degrees Celsius. So our set point, the point we want to keep it at, is 25 degrees Celsius. So the set point is 25 degrees Celsius. Now what happens if we, for example, if just generally it gets warmer, so if the temperature rises, so here, this arrow here, is supposed to be an increase in temperature. So increase in temp to round about, let's say 27 degrees Celsius. So here it's increased. Now we have to label this. It is our stimulus because anything that is away from its normal state, that is different from its normal state, is our stimulus. So this increase in temperature is our stimulus. Now the thermostasis part picks it up, the texture change. So detection happens at the thermostat in this example. So the thermostat, this part is our detection part. And once it's detected at change, it's going to send a signal to the coordinating center. In this case, the coordinating center is just the computer part of the thermostat. So control center, which is the coordinating center, is number three. Now this coordinating center has a mission, which is to bring that temperature back down. And it has to think about how it can do this. So in the case of the thermostat or the control coordinating center, I can just tell it to blow more cold air. And if it blows more cold air, it's going to decrease the temperature back to its set point. So the response is the blowing of the cold air to bring it back down to 25 degrees Celsius. And then it's back at 25 degrees Celsius. And the other way around, the same thing. If, for example, we have, we're going to be at, uh, let's say, 22 degrees Celsius instead of 25. So the temperature has decreased. So a decrease in temp. Again, that's our stimulus because that's away from our, our ideal part, our ideal state. Then the thermostat will detect that change. So detection happens at the thermostat. The coordinate center gets that new signal that something's wrong and its mission is to bring it back to its, its original level. And the coordinate center will have a response to bring it back up. In this case, it just shuts it off, so it stops blowing cold air, and that way it makes it hotter again and brings it back to 25 degrees Celsius. So the response was that just it shutting off the actual blowing part. Now, what is the feedback mechanism? Is that the response affects the stimulus. So our stimulus was the 25 degrees Celsius, going from 25 to 27, so the increase in temperature, and our response affects our stimulus because it brings it back down to its original level, 25 degrees Celsius. So it was at 27, then it brought it back down to 25. So the response, which was that blowing more cold air, affected our stimulus, which was that increase in temperature, negatively, by bringing it back down. So this is negative, the negative feedback mechanism, negative feedback mechanism. And the reason why is because the actual stimulus, which was the increase in temperature, was negatively affected by our response because it decreased the stimulus. So this was the analogy. I'm going to go over the actual example which the stop point requires you to do. So it actually requires you to model the actual homeostasis 
or the feedback mechanism. So in our body, we want to have a set point of about 37 degrees Celsius. That's a set point. Now we call this thermoregulation. Thermo means temperature, regulation means controlling. So thermoregulation is what this is, all this is called. So our set point is at 37 degrees Celsius. Now if that increases, so let's say it increases to 39 degrees Celsius. That's our stimulus, so that first part again, number one, that's our stimulus right here. Uh, the thermoreceptors are the thing that picks up the change, so detection happens at our thermoreceptors. So two is right here. Our thermoreceptors are what detects that change. Then that signal gets sent from receptors to our hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is our control center. So the hypothalamus controls the whole thing and it will it will send the response and the response is either a sweating or blood vessel dilating or both these are the, and they often occur together so this these responses then help bring it back down sweating and blood vessel dilating they will bring it back down from from the increased 39 degrees for example this is an example back to its original 37 degrees celsius so that's if it's too high and if it's too low same thing happens, so if the stimulus this time is a decrease in temp, so let's say for example to 35 degrees Celsius, that's our stimulus because that's away from our normal state. Then what happens is detection occurs at our thermoreceptors, so detection was right here. The hypothalamus picks up that change because the thermoreceptor sends a signal to the hypothalamus, which is part of our brain. So hypothalamus is our control center, because it will control what to do. And the hypothalamus will send out a signal, and it will send out a signal to different organs, and these are the response parts. So response happens by, for example, shivering can occur, and our blood vessels can constrict, and these help bring our temperature back up. So it was 35 degrees Celsius because of that stimulus, but now it has increased again to 37 degrees Celsius. So again, the feedback mechanism, our stimulus, which was a decrease in temperature, was affected negatively by our response because instead it didn't decrease it even further, it increased it back to its original state. So the feedback mechanism was that the response affects the stimulus, that's what the feedback mechanism is. And what you have to do for this um, dot point is actually draw one of these kind of diagrams and be able to know what is the stimulus where the dust detection occur, which one is the control center, and what kind of responses occur. I'm also going to quickly go over these different responses that can occur as well and explain what they are. All right, so for example, we say sweating. So what does sweating do? Sweating, this one here, is supposed to be represented by this one. So what you can imagine, again, we have maybe our two high temperatures are at 39 degrees Celsius If going here for the blood vessels. And then it comes out back to normal, back to 37 degrees Celsius. And the reason why is because these yellow dots are supposed to be our body temperature, our body heat. Now, with sweat, you have these sweat glands, which are the things in brown. These are our sweat glands. They're all glands, but it's sweat glands. And you have these sweat particles as well. And once it gets too hot, these sweat particles will get produced, and they evaporate. So they evaporate. So these squiggly lines, yellow squiggly lines, are your things evaporating. And this cools everything below it. So it cools the skin, but it also cools these blood vessels. So this is meant to be at the skin. So it cools these blood vessels, and there's a heat inside. So once it evaporates, it goes from 39 degrees Celsius initially, but then it gets cooled down, and it's 37 degrees Celsius. So that's how sweating works. Now, how are blood vessels dilating works? Dilating means increasing in size. So what you can imagine here, this is our normal size of our blood vessels here at our skin this year. But now they've dilated, which means they've increased in size. Now they're twice as big. And what it means if they're twice as big, you also have twice as much body temperature or heat being able to go there. And when this cooling down happens because these evaporate, then all of them are going to be healed, not going to be healed, but they're going to be cooled down, which means it's going to have twice as much cooling down because it's twice as much heat to cool, it, cool down as well. Right? So, Dilation of blood vessels just means we have more to cool down because the blood vessels are bigger, so more body heat can fit into it. And that happens when the temperature is increased by too much. On the opposite side, if it's decreased by too much, 
we have two different responses, shivering and that versus constricting. Now what shivering is, is just you have here, these are these are meant to be our hair. What I draw here, these strange gray things are our hair particles. And this is a diagram of our hair. And what we have attached to our hair, or can make it move, are these erecta erecta pulling muscles. These ones here, which are here. And what you can imagine is they're gonna make these move in all directions. And when they move in all directions, the hair will produce heat. So shivering is just hair, these muscles, producing heat by constantly moving them around. And if it's too cold, obviously heat production is good because that will increase our temperature back to 37 degrees Celsius. So shivering is one response because uh, our muscles are active, which activity means more heat. And that's one response to bring our temperature back up from its too low state. And the other ones were if constriction, blood vessels constricting. So again, here we have our normal level. Blood vessels are normal size. Constricting means that they are going to be smaller than usual. So here you can see they're quite small. And this is supposed to be our skin. So what you can see now is we have less blood and less heat flowing to our skin, which means less is lost, less heat is lost to surroundings as well. Because usually the heat could escape through the actual skin. But if there's less of it flowing around, there's less heat loss as well. So these are the responses. So when it comes to this dot point, you should be able to draw this kind of diagram, understand that kind of diagram, and be able to appreciate these responses as well. Sweating and blood vessels dilating when it's too hot, and blood vessels constricting and shivering when it's too cold. Plus, you should know that the feedback mechanism is all about the stimulus, which is the thing if it goes too high or too low, that being affected by our response, which in this case it does. Our response will usually always bring it back to normal. So a stimulus is away from normal, our response brings it back to normal. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.